Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for showing up on Monday afternoon, early evening with me. I'm Rachel Peters, physical therapist with Agile Physical Therapy. Wanting to welcome you guys to Pilates Mat Work. And I'm really glad you decided to join me this evening. So let's go ahead and get to our mats. And we'll get moving. We're gonna stand in the middle of our mats with those mats facing horizontally towards your screen. Give yourself some room. We're gonna line our feet up with our hips. Settle into our feet a little bit. And you wanna take a couple deep breaths in and out. Settle into your feet and just slowly start shifting your weight towards your toes, towards your heels a little bit. See if you can locate where the high point of your arch is. It's gonna be right in front of the ankle joint. You get a picture of string at the crown of your head, reaching all the way up toward the ceilings, giving a little bit more space between each of those vertebrae through your spine. We're gonna place the hands right in our midsection and we're gonna revisit those arches again. We're gonna shift the weight forward and back, finding the end range of our base of support here. As we come toward the toes, you might feel your core tightening as you hit those end ranges. And as we shift back toward the heels, you might feel a little tightening there as you hit those end ranges as well. We're gonna come right back to some middle ground, right in front of those ankle joints. And then from there, we're gonna shift the weight side to side, pushing the floor away with your feet. Those knees can be a little bit soft. You wanna feel the floor at the outer border of your foot and towards your inner part of your big toe as you press that foot away. We're gonna make some little circles around that base of support. Feeling if you take the web space of your thumb to first finger, you place that right at your waistline, you'll feel some muscles turn on and off in different parts of your midsection. As you shift from side to side, forward and back. And let's go ahead and go the other direction as well. Shifting toward the toes to the side and back toward those heels. We'll make one more circle here and then come right back over the front of those ankle joints with the arms down by the sides. Flip the toes up. We're gonna keep the balls of the feet pressed into the floor. You'll feel your arches lift a little bit as those toes go up. Think about spreading your toes apart from each other and dropping them down one at a time. So that pinky toe comes first and then we move the feet in sequence coming all the way back down to the mat. Lift up those toes, spread them apart and we'll draw them down in sequence. One more time with that string at the crown of the head, pulling you up, spread those toes, and we'll take them back down, sinking them into the floor. Let's shift forward to the balls of the feet here and hover those heels up off the mat a little bit. Just a little, we're gonna bounce up and down really gently in a slow and controlled manner, keeping that weight forward toward the balls of your feet as you go. We're gonna keep that weight forward and keep those heels up off the floor. Just a couple inches, maybe one or two inches up. We're gonna take those arms to the ceiling. Reach your fingertips up and drop those blades down toward the floor. Maybe if you have a little bit more room, you could shift a little bit farther forward on those toes and raise your heels up to the ceiling. Let's take one more big breath in here at the top. On the exhale, we'll go ahead and lower down. Take those arms down by the sides and let's go ahead and move toward one of the edges of your mat with the feet. Again, staying hip width apart. We're gonna soften up those knees, take the hands right to where your hips fold into your pelvis there. From here, keeping the back nice and slow, we're gonna stick that tailbone back and the crown of the head forward, moving toward a position where that back might be parallel to the floor. If you need to bend up those knees a little bit to get there, that's okay. And from here, we're gonna take those arms and let those hands hang down toward the floor. Those arms are gonna be resting vertically. Looking down towards your mat, we're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades back, lift the elbows up to meet those blades. Keeping the squeeze in the blades, those hands come forward, and we'll draw those shoulder blades forward as well. Squeeze the blades, bend the elbows, reach them back. Keep the squeeze, bring the hands down and release the blades. Let's do two more here, warming up those shoulders, squeeze, lift the elbows, lower the elbows, release the squeeze, and one more time, squeeze, 
lift, lower, release those shoulders. We're gonna take the far arm, the arm farthest from your screen and bring it back by the side. And that knee arm is gonna reach overhead. We're gonna switch through, keeping the rest of the body nice and still. Maybe add a head turn. As your arm closest to the screen comes forward, we're gonna look over that opposite shoulder and then switch through. Almost like a little swim. Reach and look. Reach and look. One more time to each side. Reach and look. And reach and look. We're gonna take both arms back by your sides. Take a big breath in. Exhaling, we're gonna fold ourselves down, bringing the hands down toward the mat. Those knees can be bent as much as you need to to get those hands down. We can straighten those knees out to get more stretch through the back of those thighs. We're gonna shake the head out a little bit here and then walk ourselves out toward an inverted V position. We're gonna line up the elbows with the ears, maybe straightening those legs to get a stretch through the hamstrings and the back of the calves. Maybe bending the knees up if you need to take pressure off that pelvis and or the back of the thighs. We can pedal those feet out a bit, dropping a heel down as the opposite knee bends and the heel lifts. And let's go ahead and cycle through a couple more times, lowering one heel, lifting the other. We'll switch and switch and switch. One more switch, then we'll take that other heel down, taking a big breath in here. Let's exhale forward to plank or plank with those knees down on the mat. Whatever position you've chosen, we're gonna shift the weight side to side, pushing the floor away with your hands. Thinking about drawing that belly gently up toward the ceiling as we move side to side. Let's take it right back to the middle. We're gonna bring those knees down if they've been up. We'll be resting on all fours. And we're gonna move through a couple of cats and cows. Curling up, belly to the ceiling, looking down toward the thighs. And then letting that belly melt down toward the floor as we bring the breastbone forward. Let's do a couple more here. Last time, curl it up. Let that belly melt down. We'll come right back to neutral and we'll wag the tail side to side, hip to shoulder, hip to shoulder, alternating through at your own speed. Last time to each. We'll take ourselves right back to neutral. The feet come together, the knees come apart. We'll draw that bottom down towards your heels and walk those hands toward the front of your mat. Find a range that's working for you. Knees, hips, ankles, and shoulders. Take it through a range that feels good. We're warming up right now. Let's take a big breath in, maybe getting that forehead to the floor. On the exhale, we'll drop those elbows down toward the mat. Let your forearms rest. Let's take our body weight forward over those forearms and we'll take the legs back behind the body. So we're resting on those upper thighs. We're gonna keep the shoulder blades drawn down toward the hips and that breastbone pressed slightly forward so that upper back gets a little bit of a backward curve in it. Let's take a breath here. On the breath out, we're gonna draw that belly up toward the ceiling. Press ourselves up so the thighs are slightly lifted. We're resting just above those knees and we're gonna press the floor away, shifting from forearm to forearm. Taking it side to side. You wanna keep your head in a neutral position. You're gonna be looking forward. Your gaze is gonna be somewhere right by the very front of your mat. We'll shift to each side one more time. Let's take it right back to the middle. Take a big breath in. On that exhale, we're gonna bring the body down to the mat. And we'll turn over onto our backs. We're gonna bend up the knees. Lining your heels up with your sit bones. So those knees, feet, and hips are gonna all be equal distances apart from each other with those hands resting down by your sides. We're gonna picture our clock face on the pelvis and abdomen with 12 o'clock up toward the breastbone, six o'clock down toward the pubic bone, three o'clock and nine o'clock on either side. From here, keeping those markers in mind, we're gonna draw that pelvis toward 12 o'clock, sending the breastbone down toward the mat and that pubic bone shortens toward the breastbone. And then we're gonna lengthen the other direction, bringing that pubic bone forward and away from your breastbone. Let's move back and forth between those two positions, 12 and six. Maybe adding a little gentle chin nod, letting the back of the neck lengthen toward the floor. 
And let's think about moving that pelvis through a range where your neck stays nice and still, 12 to six, with that pelvis. Let's bring ourselves right back to neutral. And again, maintaining that little chin nod, we're gonna move the pelvis from three to nine. We can start off by moving the knees toward the screen, letting your pelvis rotate up one direction while the other comes down to the mat. And then we switch it, those knees move the other way, and that opposite side of the pelvis lifts a bit. Let's take a few side to side movements here, moving the knees. And then we're gonna quiet those knees down, leaving them up toward the ceiling, and we're gonna move the pelvis on stationary legs. So one hip comes down toward the floor as the other one raises up, three o'clock. And we switch through 180 degrees to nine o'clock. Notice your, your feet will be pressing a little bit unevenly into the floor as you rock side to side. That's okay, that's giving you that stability through the leg that you're moving from. Let's go one more time to each side. We'll move that pelvis right back to a neutral position. We're gonna nod the chin, letting the back of the neck rest down toward the floor. And we're gonna float that head up off the mat just an inch or so, maintaining that chin nod. Lower the head, release that nod. Nod and lift, lower and release. Nod and lift, lower and release. Nod and lift, lower and release. And last time here, we'll nod, lift the head, lower the head, and release. And we're gonna look side to side. Look over one shoulder, look over the other shoulder, Take it right back to the middle. We'll take a big breath in, letting that belly rise to the ceiling. And on the exhale, we'll draw that belly button down toward the spine as if you're tightening a little seat belt and muscles between your navel and that pubic bone. If you have a little bit of a curve in your back, that's okay. If you start with the curve, you can maintain that same curve the entire time. If you keep your glutes relaxed, you'll, relax, you'll avoid going into an overly flattened position, which can make other muscles work that we're not focusing on right now. So keeping that gentle chin nod, keeping those belly muscles active, we're gonna bring one knee up to 90 degrees and take the other one to meet it in a tabletop position. Those chins are gonna be as close as you can get to parallel to the ceiling. We're gonna take the hands and press them down into your thighs, matching that pressure with your thighs against your hands. From here, we're gonna hold that position, feeling some muscles working from that lower rib area all the way down to that pubic bone. And maybe we wiggle and straighten the knees a little bit. Maybe we bend those heels down towards your bottom. Find a range you can move through without excessive strain. And then maybe if we want to stretch the back of those thighs a little bit, we straighten them as close as we can to the ceiling. They could be bent. We could have a kickstand down if we needed to take a little pressure off. Regardless, we're going to keep that belly drawn down. Find the range you can keep your legs nice and stable through and we'll take those hands down by the sides. We're gonna keep them hovered up off the floor and stretch those fingertips toward the wall in front of you. Maybe we nod the chin and lift the head. And we're gonna pat those hands up and down like we're bouncing little small basketballs. Inhale in five, four, three, two, one, and breathe it out. Keep that pattern going as we inhale. And exhale, two, three, four, five, keep it going. Breathe it out. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. Keep those arms going. You could certainly have your head resting on the mat. Whether your head's up or down, you could take those legs and extend them forward toward whatever wall is in front of you. Breathe it in, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. We're gonna flip those palms over and press that air to the ceiling now. Keeping that breathing pattern going. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Breathe it in, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Last time, inhale, and exhale, two, three, four, five. The upper body comes down if it's been up. We're gonna keep those hands hovered up off the mat, and we bring those knees back to that 90 degree tabletop position. If your head's been up, I'd suggest looking side to side to give those deck muscles a little bit of a breather. Then coming back to the middle, we're gonna hold ourselves in tabletop here and take the backs of the hands down to the mat. Keeping the backs of the hands pressed down to the mat, we're also gonna drop those shoulder blades down as well. 
You're gonna raise the head up if you wanna add a little challenge. We're gonna keep that near leg bent up into 90 degrees and we're gonna stretch that far leg away from the screen. We're gonna stretch that forward in front of you. We'll bring that knee back to tabletop and switch it up. And let's move through at your own pace. We're gonna do one more here on each side. Maybe the head's down. And we're gonna hang on to that near knee, the knee closest to that screen. We're gonna slide that opposite leg down along the floor. Take your upper body down as well. And then pulling that knee into your chest, we're gonna also take it side to side, stretch it across the body a little bit. Give that glute a little bit of a chance to open up, get prepared for the rest of the exercises we have going on today. We'll take it back to the middle. We're gonna keep it pulled in. And we're going to take that opposite leg, the straight knee, we're going to lift that foot up off the mat and stretch it forward. Maybe we nod the chin and curl the upper body up a bit, bringing that nose and knee a little closer to each other. Whether the head's up or down, that straight leg is going to keep reaching forward and it's going to go side to side. We're going to paint a line on the wall in front of you. A nice straight horizontal line, keeping the rest of the body as still as you can. We're going to go one more time here. We're going to try to keep that foot hovered up off the floor. We're going to roll the upper body down if it's been up and then reverse our grip. We'll hold on behind the thigh on that bent knee. And we're going to slowly extend that bent knee, bringing that foot toward the ceiling. Find that first barrier where you first start to feel some stretch through that hamstring, but not so much that you get a pull through the lower leg. We're going to hold it there, relax your foot a bit, and then maybe see if you can take that leg and straighten it up a little farther. If you have more room, you can hold behind your thigh. You can even hold around your ankle, depending on your flexibility. Or we can keep that knee bent if we need to take a step back. Maybe we add a little myofascial nerve glide here by flexing and pointing, wiggling the toes a bit. We're gonna point those toes up toward the ceiling. Keep that leg at whatever length it is right now. And then drawing from that lower abdominal area, we're gonna draw that Leg closest to the floor, we're gonna press that heel to the floor and then use those lower abdominals to lift that leg back up just a little bit. A few inches down and a few inches up. You could use your hand right at that lower belly area to monitor and make sure those muscles are staying active. Last time, we'll lower and we'll lift. Maybe we keep that leg hovered for a little bit more lower abdominal challenge or maybe we rest it on the floor or even bend that knee for a little more back support. Whatever position you've chosen, we're gonna hold that there and take those arms to the ceiling. Reach them up vertically with those toes reaching the ceiling and those fingertips lining up toward the light fixtures. Keeping that pelvis on the floor, we're gonna take that leg stretching toward the ceiling and move it side to side. Again, that leg closest to the mat could be resting on the floor or it could be lifted for a little challenge. And we're gonna make some circles with that leg that's reaching up toward the ceiling. If we need a little more support, those arms could come down by your sides. They can stay vertical. They could also come back overhead, lengthening that line and increasing the challenge for that upper part of your abdomen. We're gonna switch directions. Let's go the other way. Drawing that circle, reaching those toes up toward the ceiling. We're gonna hold it at the top, bring those hands back behind that thigh or behind that calf. We're gonna pull that knee into the chest and switch it up. We'll bring the other knee up to the chest to meet it. We'll slide that other leg down along the mat, straightening it out as best you can. Hold it there. And we're gonna rock that bent knee across the body and then back toward the opposite shoulder. Opening up a bit through that hip, stretching out those rotators just a little bit. We're going to pull it back to the center. Keep the hands right above the top of the shin, rolling the shoulders back and down. We draw the belly down. Maybe we curl that head up, looking towards your knee. And we're going to hover that other leg up off the mat, just a few inches. Whether your head's up and down, we're going to use that straight leg now to paint that same horizontal line on the wall in front of you keeping the rest of the body as still as you can. And remember that head could be down. You wanna to try to maintain that chin nod whether your head is lifted or lowered. We'll stretch that moving leg out in front again. Hold it there. The head comes down if it's been up 
and we're going to hold on behind that other thigh. Switch your grip. And this time we'll extend that far leg up toward the ceiling. Find your barrier. Maybe loosen up, relax that ankle a little bit, see if you can straighten that knee a bit more. And now we could add that toe point ankle dorsiflexion to get a little bit of a myofascial gliding to that lower part of the leg. Again, we want to keep as much of that stretch through the hamstring versus the lower leg as possible. We're going to pause that foot. Again, that straight leg closest to the mat could be hovered up off the mat a little bit. We're going to draw the belly down and keeping those abdominals active, we're going to use them to help control that supporting foot to the floor and to lift that heel up. Lower and lift at your own speed. You certainly could work on this with the head lifted a bit for a different challenge. We're gonna keep that straight leg slightly hovered up off the floor. Bring the upper body down if it's been up and we'll take those arms back to the ceiling. Now moving that far leg side to side, keeping that pelvis anchored into the mat. You could bring your fingertips into those lower abdominals to monitor, make sure they're pulling down toward the floor. Hands could be down by the sides for more support. They could be up to the ceiling. And as we move into circles, if we want to challenge it further, we could take those arms back overhead. We could certainly give yourself a little bit of a kickstand if you needed a bit more support. Let's circle that leg the opposite direction, finding the challenge level that's working best for you right now. We can always modify later. Taking that leg back up to the ceiling, we're gonna hold on behind that thigh, behind that calf, whatever you need to do to get that stretch. We're gonna drop those shoulders down your back and then keeping those elbows soft, maybe we curl up. We keep a nod whether the head's up or down and we're gonna move through a straight leg stretch. We're gonna bring that other leg up as the leg that's been up comes down and we'll switch through at your own pace. Maybe we add a little pulse, bringing that leg a little closer to your head as we go. We can challenge it further through those abdominals by dropping the hands down to the mat, palms up. We'll do one more time here on each side. And we're gonna pull both knees into the chest, upper body rolls down if it's been up, and we roll those shoulders back and down in circles. From here, let's look over one shoulder. We'll look over the other shoulder. We'll take them right back to the middle. And with those arms down by the sides, we're gonna bring our legs back up to tabletop. We'll draw that belly down and see again if we can extend both legs this time toward the ceiling. Find the stopping point that works. They might be bent a bit, that's okay. They might be straight. Your heels and knees might be together. They might be a little bit apart depending on the way your legs are shaped. Keeping those hands pressed into the floor, we're gonna rock both legs together, side to side, drawing a horizontal line on the ceiling. Find a range you feel like you can control through your trunk, and then test it a little bit. Take those hands and just hover them up an inch or two off the floor. See if that range changes. As you hit the end range on one side, you'll feel those opposite side muscles working to help pull you back toward the center. We can move the legs together and make some counterclockwise circles. Again, hands stay hovered up off the floor or they come down pressing into the mat for a little more support. And we can circle the other way as well. We can also take those arms to the ceiling, challenge it a little differently with those feet reaching up toward the ceiling. Again, knees might be a little bit bent here. We're gonna move those legs in opposite directions of each other. Start off with some small circles. Challenge them a little bit. Maybe we make them a little bit bigger. If your knees are bent, you might almost feel like you're doing a breaststroke here. We're gonna circle that other direction. Focus on keeping that chin gently knotted towards your neck. Keeping that belly drawn down towards your spine. One more circle here. We'll bend those knees to tabletop and then draw them in, pulling them into the chest and taking a breather, rocking everything side to side one more time. 
And let's pull right back to the middle. We're going to roll those shoulders back and down again, anchoring them firmly into the floor. And this time, we'll bring those arms to the ceiling and the knees back in tabletop for our next prep exercise. The belly draws down. We could nod the chin and lift the head, or we can keep the head down. Regardless, we're going to take one arm back overhead and stretch the opposite leg forward, and then move through at your own speed. We're trying to keep that bent shin parallel to the ceiling as best as you can. We're gonna stretch one more time on each side. We'll pull both legs back to tabletop, the arms to the ceiling, and then let's take the head down. We're gonna keep the head down for this next set. We're gonna flex those feet, pulling your toes towards your knees. We'll drop the blades down, drop the belly down, and think about dropping your breastbone down as well. As we slower, slowly lower both heels toward the floor together, exhaling to the bottom, we'll inhale them back up to that tabletop position. Exhale, lower, inhale, lift. Keep that pattern going. Inhale, lift. The head will stay down. We're gonna focus on keeping a bit of a chin nod. And we could challenge this further by lowering the heels and taking those arms back overhead at the same time and then lifting back up to that tabletop position. Lower down, lift them up. Exhale, lower, inhale up top. We're gonna do three more. If you want your final progression, those feet come up toward the ceiling. Maybe we keep them flexed here. We take those legs down, arms back overhead as if you're a book opening. We inhale back to the ceiling. Exhale, open up. Inhale, top. Last one, exhale. Inhale to the top. We're gonna to bring those hands all the way back down to the sides. Bend those knees to tabletop. Take one foot to the floor. Take the other foot to the floor to meet it. Those knees will be bent. The heels will be lined back up with those sit bones. And we're gonna rock the knees side to side taking a few breaths in and out here and giving your trunk a little time to prepare for our next sequence. Coming back to the middle, we're gonna rock through our pelvic clock again. We'll go 12 to six, shortening the breastbone toward the, or excuse me, the pubic bone toward the breastbone, then lengthening it away. We'll take it back to neutral and rock that pelvis from three o'clock to nine o'clock. One more time to each. We'll take it back to neutral, bringing those heels a little bit closer to your bottom. Let's take a big breath in. We'll draw belly and spine together and exhale up into bridge. Find the top of your motion where you feel those glutes working, but also feel some length to the front of your thighs. We're going to hold that there and press those arms down for a little more support. Big breath in, exhale, and we'll lower the body back down. Let's move it through at your own speed. Pressing, driving through those heels to keep the effort more in the glutes and less through the hamstrings, less likely to cramp here. And we'll lower down. Again, keep it moving, holding at the top just long enough to get a little stretch through the front of your thighs. Maybe down by the kneecap, maybe up as high as your hip flexors. We're gonna hold that next bridge up at the top. And we're gonna go up onto our toes. Keeping that stretch through the front of the thighs, we're gonna lift the heels. We're gonna slowly lower the heels, keeping those glutes lifted. The pelvis should stay relatively still as you move. If you wanna have your hands up on your hip bones to monitor your position, that's completely fine. We could change it up a little bit and do one heel at a time. Again, trying to maintain that pelvic stability as we make those legs do opposite things. You might get a bit of a stretch towards your inner part of your quad as you go up and down. We're gonna bring both heels back down to the mat, take a big breath in. Exhaling, we'll bring the body back down. Let's take a little breather, rock those knees side to side, letting your pelvis go along for the ride. We'll take it right back to the middle for an inhale. And on the exhale, we'll bridge back up, we'll hold it at the top. We're gonna keep the hip on that side farthest from your screen, lift it up. That other hip's gonna lower down just slightly toward the mat. We'll lift it back up and then lower that far hip down. 
lift and lower at your own speed, working on rotating through the pelvis as those legs stay pointed toward the wall in front of you. Your glute is working pretty hard on that side that's staying lifted. It's a little bit of a reprieve on the other side, but not much. Let's lift into the ceiling again. Take a big breath in. Exhaling, we'll take it all the way back down to the mat. We'll breathe it in again. We'll exhale, drawing the belly back toward the spine. Let's take one more breath to prepare. Inhale. Exhaling, we'll bridge it up again. We could stick with rotation or we can move to a march. Again, we're trying to keep that pelvis lifted here. We'll lead with the knee or we'll stick with rotation. And then if you want to challenge it further, you could lift that knee and extend that leg, bringing the foot to the ceiling, bending it back up to place it on the mat. You could add a leg lowering and a leg lifting if you want to get fancier. Let's go ahead and take both feet back down to the mat, pressing the heels into the floor. We'll lift up a tiny bit higher for breath in. We'll exhale it down. Letting the tailbone finish the motion, resting on the mat. Maybe wiggle your bum around a little bit. We'll take those knees side to side, taking the pressure off that back. We're gonna come right back to the middle. We have one more exercise in the sequence. If bridging with rotation or bridging with a mark, march was challenging enough, stay right there. If you wanna take it one step further, we're gonna go for a single leg bridge. We have two options for leg positions. One could be up a tabletop, or that ankle could be resting on your opposite knee, up to you. You get a little more stabilization if your foot's resting on the opposite side. We're gonna hold wherever you choose with that foot. Take a big breath in. On the exhale, we'll press through that supporting heel, raise it up, and control it down. Lift and lower. If you're in tabletop, it'll look like this. You could try with that other foot raising up toward the ceiling as well. If you're a lot more flexible than I, you could bring that leg a little closer to your shoulders as you raise it up. Let's go ahead and bring that foot back down. We'll bring that opposite leg up to tabletop or ankle towards your opposite knee. We'll take a breath in to prepare and we'll bridge it up and down. Finding a leg position that's working best for you to give you the biggest challenge that you feel prepared for at this moment in time. We have one more lift. We lower it down. We're gonna cross one leg over and pull both knees into your chest, giving that glute a bit of a stretch, letting it relax as you wiggle gently side to side. Let's take one more breath here and then we'll switch. We'll cross the other one over. Pull them in towards your chest. Maybe we gently rock side to side. If it doesn't feel great to be up in this full knee to chest position, feel free to have one foot down. You're always welcome to push that leg gently out to the side, keeping pressure off your knee. We're gonna unfold those legs, bring your feet to the floor. We'll take the arms up to the ceiling again. Those fingertips reach up toward the light fixtures. With straight elbows, those shoulder blades press down into the floor. We're going to straighten the legs out as much as you're comfortable doing. Assess that position. If you feel like it's compressing in your back at all, if it doesn't feel comfortable, feel free to bend those knees back up. Otherwise, we'll keep them straight as we take those shoulder blades and wrap them around the front of the body, bringing those hands up, and then we drop those blades to the floor. We're going to try to maintain a little of that chin nod as we take those shoulder blades and let them move. Try to keep your breastbone still enough that you could balance something right on the middle of it. We're gonna lower those blades down and take a big breath in. As you exhale, we're gonna draw the chin gently down toward the neck, let the back of the neck lengthen toward the floor. We're gonna drop the lower part of that breastbone down toward the mat. You'll feel your upper back press into the floor. You'll feel those lowest ribs go along for the ride, pressing down to the mat. You're gonna feel that belly button and drop that down to the floor as well. Holding those connections with the back of the mat, let's take those arms back. Take them back as far as they'll go before you feel like that lower back or that mid back pops toward the ceiling. Try to keep those ribs under control. Keep them down 
versus letting them flare up. Depending on how much uh, length or how tight you feel through the sides of your trunk and upper arms as you stretch overhead, go ahead and bring those arms back as far as you're comfortable doing so. We're gonna hold them there. And again, we'll reset that chin down, that breastbone down, those lowest ribs down, and that belly button down. We can hold it here and breathe, or we can kick it up a notch by lifting one foot up and down, and then the other. Keep that going. If your knees are bent, it'll be more like a little march. What we're going for here is stability through the pelvis. You want that pelvis stable enough that you could balance a marble right in your belly button without losing it there. You could challenge it further by switching the legs midair. Regardless of what progression you've chosen, we're going to start bringing those hands up toward the ceiling. We'll bring those legs back to the floor. Take one more big breath, stretching those arms overhead as you inhale. And then exhaling, we're going to go ahead and make our way over to our stomachs. And we're going to rest the upper body down on your mat. That forehead's going to be resting on the back of the hands. Those elbows are out to the sides. Take a couple breaths here. Make sure you feel comfortable. Wiggle around a little. Maybe take your feet apart from each other a little bit if you need a little bit more space for your lower back. Draw that belly up and away from the mat. Like I said before, we're trying to keep the muscles active. If your skin still touches the floor, that's okay. You're going to keep those muscles drawing up and maybe float your forehead up off your hands keeping the belly active and that forehead floated up. See if you can bring your forearms up as well. Bring your hands up towards your forehead. Now we squeeze the glutes, add a little bit of a flutter kick. This is either gonna be a straight leg kick or if those hips are really tight, you might be bending your knees and moving a little bit more from your knees. Either is okay. It's always good to have something to work for. And toward, we're gonna click those heels together. Click, click, click. Let's open up those feet again. We're gonna flutter kick again. Maybe we challenge that flutter kick a little more by taking those arms out overhead, alternating the legs with those arms. We'll go here for a swim for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's take those legs to the floor. Bring those hands back by your side. Then we're gonna flip those palms toward the floor. Hold them there. Squeeze your blades. Hold it. Squeeze and breathe, keeping that breastbone slightly lifted, that chin gently mounted toward the neck, and that belly lifted up. If you want to change it up here and increase that challenge a little bit, if that's not enough to think about, we're going to move through some kind of upside down snow angels. Hands come overhead, arms come back down by your sides. Go through whatever range of that feels appropriate. It might just be a couple inches. You might take it all the way up overhead. We'll bring those arms back by the sides, take an inhale, and on the exhale, we'll squeeze your blades, pulse the back of the hands toward the ceiling for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a big breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna push ourselves up to hands and knees. And we'll move through a bit of cat and cow, just to shake off that last exercise, that last series on our stomachs, which can be a little bit challenging. Let's take it back to neutral and we'll wag the tail side to side. Hip to shoulder, hip to shoulder. We could cross a foot over, the opposite foot to the side you're moving toward to get a little more stretch. Switch it up, cross that other leg over. One more time to each side. Taking everything back to hands and knees, we're gonna rock ourselves forward over the wrists, back toward the heels. Try to keep your back still enough that you could balance something on it. We're pulling with the heels of the hands to come forward and then pushing the heels of the hands toward the mat as we rock that bottom back toward the heels. Let's come back to the middle and we're gonna shift the weight side to side. Again, pushing the floor away with your hands. We can make little circles around that base of support. We're letting those core muscles do some work without necessarily having to consciously activate them when we put weight through the hands. Let's go ahead and circle the other direction. 
We'll make our way right back to all fours, wrists and shoulders line up, knees and hips line up. And from here, we're gonna thread the needle. That arm farthest away from your screen is gonna come out to the side. Maybe we follow it. We're gonna thread that arm through between that opposite hand and knee, reaching it towards your screen. Bring it up and out, thread it through. We'll do two more here, take it up and out and thread whatever breathing pattern is working for you to keep you from holding your breath is what I want you to do here. We'll make our way back up to hands and knees, we'll reset, and that arm closest to the screen now comes out to the side, and we reach it through. Let's take it up and out, reach it through, thread the needle, two more, and reach, last one, We'll thread it through. Let's take the hands right back underneath those shoulders. And from here, keeping the belly and spine gently drawn toward each other, we're gonna squeeze your shoulders together behind your back with elbows straight. We're gonna press those blades forward toward the floor. Squeeze and press. This is like a mini push up for your scapula. We're trying to keep that lower body, lower half as still as possible. If you started off with a little curve in the lower back, you wanna maintain that curve as, that shoulder blades, as the shoulder blades move. We're gonna to switch to single side. One of the hands comes to your thigh as we press up and down through that opposite hand. Again, if that doesn't feel great on your shoulder or your wrist or your elbow, you're free to keep both hands on the mat. We'll switch sides if we've been doing a single one. Again, reassess. You might feel differences side to side. A lot of times that non-dominant hand that arm's gonna be a little bit tougher. We'll pull down, press. We're gonna take that other hand back down to the mat. Hold it there. From here, we're gonna stretch the arm closest to your screen out in front of you. Take that opposite leg back behind the body. Switch through at your own speed. We're working on rotational challenges to your trunk here. Working on keeping steady, even as Gravity and arm movements challenge your ability to do so. If you wanna make this harder, you could be up in a full plank. We could take either a leg, an arm, or opposites and lift them up here. We'll do a few more, either up in plank or on hands and knees before we move on. Completely up to you what level you decide. We're gonna meet back on all fours for a couple cats and cows. And whether you've done the planks or the ones on all fours leading up to now, we're gonna stay with all fours. We're gonna shift the weight to the hand and knee away from the screen. We're gonna slide the opposite leg out behind you. See if you can take that other arm out in front. Maybe it lifts up half an inch. Maybe you bend your elbow, lift it up a little bit. Switch it up. Opposite arm and leg come away. Let's do one more time on each side. The more you practice this, the easier it does get, I promise. It might take a while, but you will get there. We're gonna come back to hands and knees here and keeping those knees and hips in line with each other. We're gonna take the forearms down to the mat. Hold them there. Let's double your fists over. Rest your forehead on it. Straighten out the leg farthest from your screen back behind you. And we're gonna take that leg up and down, keeping the rest of the body nice and still. Hold it up, take it side to side. Hold it back behind the body, bend that knee to 90 degrees. And we're gonna lower that knee down to the mat and press it back up. Control that knee down, control it back up. Two more here. Again, going for keeping that back as still as you can. Hold that leg up at the top, we'll pulse the heel for eight, seven, six, keep it going. Three, two, one. We'll take that knee back down and we'll straighten that opposite leg out. So the leg closest to your screen is stretching behind you. With a straight knee, we'll take that one up and down. Keep that belly lifted, the legs up, and we'll take it side to side. Let's 
stretch that leg back behind you, bend that knee to 90. Maybe we have the foot flex to keep from cramping. We control that bent knee down and take it back up. Lower it and lift. Lower and lift. One more time. And pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go ahead and take that knee down. We're going to bring the feet together, the knees apart. Draw your bottom back towards your heels. Hold in here for a deep breath. Big breath in, big breath out. Walk your hands over to one side of your mat. Take an inhale to the other side. As we breathe out, we're going to walk in the other direction. Hand over hand, take an inhale. Exhale. We're going to walk them back to the middle. Big breath in. On that exhale, we're going to come up and take our legs out in front of us. Now the goal here is going to be to be up on those sit bones as best as possible. If your hamstrings are feeling flexible and long, you can keep those legs straight. If they need to be a little bit bent, they can be a little bit bent. All right. Those feet are forward, toes are flexed back, and we're going to take those arms up until they're parallel to your legs. Those fingertips are going to be lined up right with your second and third toes here. And with that belly drawn back, we're going to hinge, reach those fingertips forward over your toes, and then take them back and upright. Reach them forward, hinge to the upright position. Reach it forward, take it up, reach it forward. Hold yourself in that forward position, and we're going to take the hands down to your legs, wherever they might land. Maybe it's your toes, maybe it's your shins, maybe it's your knees. Hold them there. We're going to take your hands to the leg closest to your screen, and that arm closest to your screen is going to open up to the side. Maybe we add a head lift for a little more rotation, depending on how it feels. Keeping the belly in, we're going to sweep through to the other side. Open it up. Let's sweep it through. And open. We'll do one more time to the other side. And open it up. Let's take ourselves right back to the middle. We'll come up nice and tall, roll those shoulders back a bit. And then bending those knees, we're gonna line up our heels with our sit bones. So we have a pretty narrow tuck position here. And we're gonna hold on behind your thighs. Elbows are gonna be soft like you're holding a beach ball. We're gonna roll the shoulders back and down a few times. Finally anchoring them down toward the hips. Walk your feet back, tipping your body back. Take it far enough back that you can still control that navel to spine, but not so far back that you, you're feeling like you're really working too hard. You wanna be able to breathe here. Okay, if you can't find a great position there, those feet can be flat on the floor, you could be upright here. We're gonna hold ourselves back, belly back. Arms are gonna to come to the outsides of your thighs. We're gonna press the hands into your knees and hold it there. That belly stays drawn down. Let's open up that arm closest to the screen. Follow with your head. We'll sweep it back to the middle and switch it up. Take it to the center, switch it up. Again, make sure you found a breathing pattern that's working. It's really easy to start holding your breath through this exercise. Do your best to keep a regular breathing pattern here. Last time, we'll open up that far arm to the side. We'll come back to the middle. And we're going to take those hands away from your knees if you want a bigger challenge. We could also come up onto the toes if you want a bigger challenge. If you feel like you're going to cramp through those toes or those calves, come back on your heels. Holding them here, we're going to take a leg and straighten it up. Lower it down. Switch it up. Keep those going. You could always give yourself a little bit of assist by holding on behind those thighs. If you want to take it a step further, we could straighten, straighten, lower, lower, straighten, straighten, lower, lower. We could always move them both at the same time. Last two of whatever level you've chosen. Last one, we'll take those feet down, sit up nice and tall, holding onto those chins. We're gonna rock through a little seated cat cow. 
We'll take it back to neutral and go ahead and face me. We could have those legs crossed, depending on how your hips and knees feel. We could have the feet in front with those knees out to the side if that feels better. You're always welcome to find a sofa cushion or something else to get your sit bones higher on so that you take, do take some pressure off your hips and knees. Once you've found a position that's gonna allow you to stay upright and over those sit bones, we're gonna take the arms out to the sides. Elbows are soft. We're gonna picture that string pulling the crown of the head up toward the ceiling, and that belly is gonna stay pulled in as we side bend. We'll take a tall side bend over, reaching your top arm to where the ceiling and wall meet. We'll take them up nice and tall, and we'll side bend the other direction. Let's take it up, side bend over, and take it up, side bend over. We're gonna do one more to each side. As we side bend, we could think about adding a little bit of rotation, dropping that breastbone toward the floor, rotating back, and then taking up and over to the other side. We side bend, maybe we rotate. We side bend back, we come up nice and tall. We're gonna bring those arms out to the sides again. Maybe we flip those palms so they face up and the thumbs are back behind us. We're gonna rotate here, bringing that breastbone over to one side and then taking it over to the other side. Rotate and rotate. One more time to each. Last one over. We'll take it back to the center. The palms are gonna face forward now, and we're gonna pulse those hands and shoulder blades back to the wall behind you for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring those arms down, we'll roll the shoulders out. We'll tip that ear side to side. We'll take it back to the middle, and let's take ourselves up to our knees. Once we're here, see how you feel. If you need to adjust your mat to give yourself a little more padding under the knees, that's fine. We're gonna take the hands to the hips and bring one leg out to the side. We're gonna press the bottom of the foot as close to the floor as you can so you can get the whole foot resting on that mat. And then moving from our hips, we're gonna take the hands to the, the legs right where the femur folds into your pelvis. We're gonna tip the bottom back and the crown of the head forward. We'll take it up. Let's hinge and lift, last two, and lift, last one, and lift, arms out to the side, we'll side bend toward the bent knee, and up and over toward that straight leg. Let's side bend, maybe adding a lift, and we'll control it up and over toward the other side. Last two, and up and over, and last one, we'll take it up and over. Let's come up nice and tall, and we're gonna switch to our other sides, maybe putting the hands down for a little balance support as we go. We'll try to get the entirety of that foot on the floor if we can. Hands to the hips, and once we're set here, we will hinge. Let's take the crown of the head forward, tailbone back, and bring it up. Hinge. Come up tall. Last two. And up. Last one. And up. Arms come out. We'll side bend toward that bent leg. Take it up and over. And we'll add a side leg lift. Up and over. Last two. And lift. Last one, and lift. And let's take that arm down, and we're gonna make our way down to our sides. From here, we're gonna rest that head on the bottom arm. Knees are bent with the heels lined up with your hips. Top hand comes down to the floor, and we press down. With the heels down, we're gonna lift those knees up and down. Lift and lower. Last two, last one. Knees come down, feet lift up. And again, that top knee comes up and down with those feet pressed together now. Last two, 
Last one. Knees and feet come down. Top knee stays bent. Bottom leg straightens out. We keep that top foot resting on the bottom leg as we control that knee down and lift. Press your bottom leg a little more firmly into the floor for a little more stability. Maybe taking the arm up in the air for the last two. Last one. We'll straighten that top leg out, bringing that top hand down. Let's flex up that foot. We're gonna kick that leg forward twice and draw it back. Maybe adding an arm, reaching forward as that top leg comes back. Last one. Bringing it back, that top arm comes down again. We'll touch the toes down and lift. Down behind the bottom leg, lift. Last two. Last one, hold them up there and we're gonna circle that leg for four, three, two, reverse it for four, three, two, one. Bottom leg comes up. We'll take them down and up together. Last four and three and two and one. Big breath in, exhale down, bend those knees, pat that hip out. And when we're ready, we'll take it up and over to the other side. Again, we'll rest the head on that bottom arm. Knees bent, heels lined up with that bottom. Pressing that top hand down, we'll lift the knees. And lower. Lift and lower. Two more. Last one. Knees down, feet stay up and hold there. Top knee lifts, top knee lowers. Lift and lower. Last two. Last one, knees down, top knee stays bent, bottom leg straightens out, keeping that top foot down and pressing the bottom leg into the floor. We take that top knee down and lift. Last two. Last one, keep it lifted, top hand down in front, we'll straighten that top leg out and flex. Flex foot, drives that leg forward, draw it back, adding the arms if you want. Arm comes back as the leg comes forward and switches. Last one, kick, kick. Leg comes back, top arm down for support. Toes come down and lift. Three, two, one. Hold it up there and circle for four, three, two. Reverse, here's four, three, two. Hold it up there, bottom leg comes up. Bring them both down and up for four, three, two, and one. Take them down, bend those knees, pat that hip out, we made it. And let's turn onto our backs with bent knees. Take a couple breaths here. We're gonna cross one leg over the other and pull them into your chest, giving them a little rock side to side, opening up those hips. Remember, you could have one foot on the floor. If you did need a little more support, we could push that knee out to the side if rotating the hip the other direction doesn't feel so great. One more breath. Switch them up. We'll cross that opposite leg over, maybe pulling them up, maybe rocking side to side, finding the level that's working for you right now. One more breath. We'll exhale. Unwind. Let's straighten those legs out. Take one more big stretch overhead with those arms. And exhaling, let's go ahead and make our way up to standing. We could stand straight up. We can move through hands and knees with a couple of cats, cows. We could take a plank with a push up option or two. Up to you. If we're here, maybe we come through that inverted V, dropping the heels for a breath. And if we're not up yet, we'll walk those feet toward our hands. Make sure those feet are planted firmly on the floor as we roll ourselves up to standing for a few backward shoulder rolls. Going ahead and facing our screen again. We're going to line the heels up with the hips. Center ourselves right over the front of those ankle joints. Soften up those knees a bit. And again, picture that string at the crown of the head drawing you up keeping some length through your spine. We're gonna shift the weight slightly towards your left foot. 
If you need something to hold on to, feel free to move so that you have a wall or a table or a chair to hold on to that's stable. We're gonna stand heel to toe. Try to keep those feet parallel. We want the narrowest space of support we can have. Maybe we challenge it by looking over one shoulder and then over the other shoulder. Let's take it back to the middle and switch them out. Let's go ahead and stand heel to toe with the other foot in front. Again, focusing on that parallel foot alignment, keeping the weight generally right between your front heel and your back toes. We could again challenge it further by looking side to side. Feeling that wiggle through the feet as your feet try to help keep you balanced. Let's go ahead and take the feet apart from each other, shift the weight to one foot, and we'll go ahead and balance on one leg or with the other foot down for a little kickstand if you need it. From here, instead of rising up and down on the toes, which we sometimes do, we could challenge it by just looking side to side and taking it back to the middle. Let's switch to our other foot. Shift, come up to kickstand or up with that foot in front of you. Soften up that knee a little bit maybe. And we look side to side. And we look back to the middle. Let's take that second foot down, shake those legs out with feet at shoulder width apart. Let's take a big breath in. We're gonna clasp those palms, reach them up and drop the blades down. We'll take a tall side bend one direction and take it up and over to the other side. Let's come up nice and tall, bringing those arms down by the sides. We'll bring our feet together. We'll take one more big breath in. Palms together, we'll bring them down through the middle. And I hope everyone enjoys their evening. Thank you so much for playing with me tonight. And I hope to see you again on the mat soon. As always, uh, your feedback, suggestions, comments, questions, concerns are always welcome. My email is rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, at agilept.com. Have a great evening, everyone, and thanks for coming.